Hello, hello, my name is Nina Moa. Today I have a very special guest, guys, for you because she's very talented makeup artist, she's very professional, she's very kind and she promised that she's gonna share every single secret with you how to become a very successful makeup artist. Stay in touch. I hope you're gonna like it. My name is Erte. Um, my Instagram name is UM Makeup Artistry. I started off doing makeup about four or five years ago um, and it started from watching Face Off and I was really interested in special effects makeup. So I researched some schools in New Jersey and I went to school and actually did the whole program of doing beauty makeup and special effects and got my teaching certification as well and did freelancing and teaching. So it was, it was really cool. When it comes to education and being self-taught, it's both of those things are wonderful, but I feel like every single person that wants to become a makeup artist uh, should really consider taking classes because it does cut the corners for you and you don't have to go through the trial and error of figuring everything out yourself. Schooling is there for you to learn and practice every day and it's one of those things where it's really important to know all the different facial shapes, know all the different eye shapes, how to, you know, what eyebrow looks good on that person with smaller eyes or bigger eyes, how to do a smoky eye, the placement. Um, so I think it's really, really important to get the education. It's gonna make you a, well, a more well-rounded makeup artist in the end, so. When it comes to beauty schools, there's so many different ones to choose from. I always think of it looking at the curriculum and seeing what is actually being taught. Um, looking at the teachers there and having a conversation with them beforehand and seeing that you're comfortable and you're going to be happy there. That's the most important thing when it comes to choosing the right school. Um, I think Nina Makeup Academy is a wonderful school. Um, just because of the staff, they're very welcomed and friendly. Um, I've worked in many different schools. Robert Fionn's Beauty Academy is a great one as well. Um, so there's no bad or amazing, every school is great, it's just about where you fit in and where you feel most comfortable in. I love beauty makeup um, because they just you can do so much with it, you can do fashion, you can do natural beauty makeup, you can do wedding makeup. Special effects is amazing too because you can go and create zombies, apply prosthetics and completely change a person from looking normal to uh, a creature that you would see in a movie. Um, so I think special effects, and the artist in me loves special effects a lot. <laughs> so today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do a smoky eye, um, telling you step by step how to fill in the eyebrows, how to do a few blending techniques, and finish it off with a full face with contour and highlight. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Pomade and Chocolate with a small eyebrow brush. And I'm going to go in by making a straight line right underneath the brow, up to the arch. And as I get to the arch, I'm bringing it down. And just doing small strokes upwards, I'm gonna be filling in the rest of the brow. Freelancing is great because you get to make your own schedule. You choose what days you want to work versus if you're working at a retail environment where you're working mostly weekends, um, holidays are really busy. So I think freelancing is wonderful if you book your schedule up and you get a lot of clients because you can be very uh, versatile with your with your times if you want to work at night if you want to have weekends off you really get to get to choose and make it your own schedule so freelancing is definitely the way next step I'm going to be taking uh, urban decay primer potion and priming her whole lid Just putting some on the back of my hand and you can use a brush or your finger to do this Tapping that primer in from the lash line and going all the way up. 
Placing your finger right on top of the brow and lifting up is gonna give you that nice control of the eyelid staying in one place. So it's really easy to do when you're blending in general. Having your finger right on top of the brow and lifting up, it's gonna give you that nice control and let you really blend out the shadow nicely. My inspiration, I would say there's many different makeup artists out there. Uh, Pat McGrath is one of the most amazing makeup artists out there. Um, also Anastasia Beverly Hills, from her starting her own company and having it completely fail and then restarting again and making it such a big empire. And now she's like on top of the world in the beauty industry, so I think that's amazing. The key to being successful in business is being true to yourself and who you are and not letting the industry change you. You have to be very humble and nice to everybody um, and really truly love what you do because if you're only doing it just to make money, you're not gonna be successful in it. You have to truly be passionate with it and really go for what you really love. So now taking a light color and a flat brush, I'm going to be packing this color on her lid in little tapping motions. We're not sweeping this, we're just nicely tapping to get that color payoff. Starting off with a light brown color, I'm going to make this my transition color and pack this on into the crease. So using little circular motions and windshield wiper motions, I'm gonna be going back and forth in her crease and just letting that color sit in there and it's gonna transition nicely and give it that smoky look afterwards. Now going in with darker browns and a smaller blending brush, I'm gonna pack that on and start working that outer corner. So again, circular motions. I'm gonna pack that color on. Uh, when you're first starting out in the beauty industry as a makeup artist and you wanna build up your portfolios, I think that uh, just going to Model Mayhem and friending you know, photographers that are on there and just building those relationships with them and doing trade for print and getting started that way and you know, building that relationship with photographers so in the end you can get paid jobs versus just trade for print. I work as a teacher full time at a makeup school so from that alone and with freelancing uh, anywhere from 60 to 70 depending on the year itself. Um, I do work with makeup companies where I advertise for free just because they send me products and I do a picture in return. Some companies will pay you money to do a post. I usually stick with the companies that I like and I truly like their product. I never just take a picture and use something just because they're paying me and I have to put it on my face. So I do work with a variety of companies where I don't charge anything or the ones that offer. Uh, of course, you can't say no to that. <laughs> if you feel like you need to blend the colors a little more, you can always go back in with the lighter brown that was our transition color and blend that right on top. Now going in with a deep purple, packing that onto my brush. I'm gonna make that outer corner even darker. Now focusing the color just in that outer corner and not really moving it out too much. As a beginner makeup artist, it all depends on the area that you're working in, what, whichever town you're in and what your clientele is going to be. So if you're starting off as a makeup artist and you're comfortable with doing clients, you can start by charging 100, um, 100 and up, not going any lower than that because then it's gonna be hard for you to, you know, pick that price back up as you get better. So anywhere from 100 and up, depending on what you're comfortable with charging and what your skills are. Course. My favorite makeup brand, again, I would say is Anastasia Beverly Hills, just because I, I'm obsessed with eyebrows. So for me, 
Any type of eyebrow products are just my thing. Not just because of the name of it, but the, the color payoff is great and the pricing is great as well. The key to not having a lot of fallout on the face is every single time you pack your brush with color to make sure to tap off the excess and this is going to prevent it from falling all over the face while you're doing the makeup. So making sure that you tap it off, it taps off the excess and the rest just goes on the eye. For some dimension, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of blue. So when the light hits, you're gonna be able to see the purples, blues, and the browns. Taking a flat brush, I'm gonna go in with a nice light shimmery color and use that as my highlight for the top of the brow bone. Bringing it down just slightly. I'm gonna use that on the inner corner going into the middle of the lid to get those two colors mixed all together. Uh, I do do sponsored posts once in a while with a few different companies. And again, just like I said before, it's not just, okay, your company, you send me an email saying we're gonna pay you this and this much, and you have to say how amazing our product is. Uh, I have to be familiar with the company, use their products, and if I like it, then I will do that. Um, it all depends on how many followers you have and how many likes you get on your pictures. So companies will ask you, but it all depends on, for example, they do by like, if you have 10,000 followers, they'll do like $100 for that. So depending on how many followers you have, you can do anywhere from like $400 to 600 and up. Again, depending on how many people look and view your page. I think organic and cruelty-free makeup products are amazing. Um, I am actually thinking of doing a makeup brand myself, and that is definitely something that I'm going to do as in cruelty-free and organic, only because I love little animals and who wants to hurt little bunnies just to test the color of a lipstick or an eyeshadow. So I'm definitely pro cruelty-free products. Going in with some gel liner and a pencil brush, I'm gonna smoke out her bottom lid, uh, her bottom lash line. I'm gonna start by taking that color and bringing it towards the inner corner. Now this part doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be smudging it and blending it all out. Now to tie it all together, I am taking that same blue and just making that edge softer. The most difficult experience, I would say, is working in the wedding industry and dealing with bridezillas. That is one of the toughest things that I've come across. It's so hard because they think that they own you and you have to do everything you know, right there and then at the, the snap of their fingers. Um, so I would say working with brides because some of them can get really, really crazy when it comes to their wedding day. So I would say that's, that's one of the toughest. My favorite clients, um, I would say just a regular, normal folk who doesn't really know a lot about makeup, but they're, they want to change the way they look and they want to look completely different and they want you to do whatever, whatever you want to them. Um, so those people are the best because it's amazing to, when they see their transformation and the look on their face, uh, once you're done, that's, that's the most rewarding part of it. Now taking some gel eyeliner and an angled brush, I'm gonna go into her waterline. I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight color right into the tear duct area. So special effects makeup, like for Halloween, if you have a client who wants to go all out for that one, you know, for that one night, it can get up to like $2,000, $3,000, depending on how creative and how much effort they want to put into their costume. Um, but I would say my most expensive thing that I've done was a bridal party. 
uh, because they just had so many people and it was, you know, a long travel and it was someone who really wanted the best of everything, so. So next step is going to be concealing her under eye area. I'm just mixing a few different concealers on my brush. Just going right under the eye, creating almost like an upside down triangle. Now going in with foundation and a foundation blending brush. I'm gonna apply this to the whole face and start buffing it in. Again, just like we did with the eyeshadow, going in circular motions. Once you've applied the foundation, you wanna go in with some setting powder. Now to contour, using some bronzer to give her a nice sun-kissed look on her cheeks. Now adding a little bit of blush. And lastly, some highlight right on top of where the blush ends. In five years, I see myself having my own makeup studio where I am teaching uh, girls and, and guys uh, who want to learn how to do makeup, doing big bridal parties, uh, throwing events, having my own makeup company. Um, so just, just doing that, <laughs> living in a world of makeup. <laughs> For the lips, I'm gonna be taking a light pink lip liner and lining her lips, starting from the bottom. Now just going in with a colored gloss. The most important thing about getting a perfect smoky eye is blending, 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 blending. So you want to make sure you have great tools, um, lots of different size blending brushes will definitely help you and really taking your time of adding colors and layering them together and really blending everything out. Um, everything is going to be nice and smoky and you'll definitely get that great effect. So again, blending is the key to a wonderful smoky eye. I hope you guys enjoyed this.